my beautiful friends and welcome back to my channel. This is Nova Gnome Creations and I'm Nova and I am here today with a little tutorial. If you are here then you may be looking for how to close up a hole in crocheting. So this is going to be if you're making something with amigurumi which is plushies, uh, crocheted plushies, or if you're making um, a ball, maybe you're making like snowballs or something. Uh, anything where you're making something that starts with a magic circle, works its way up, and then closes again. It's going to kind of end you with a circle uh, where you may have six stitches or you may have nine stitches, something like that. So for this particular one, I have nine stitches, but it does not matter. Whatever you have, uh, I can show you how to close it with this video. So first things first, to begin, other than your crochet, what will you need? Well, you're going to need uh, your tail of yarn that is connected to your project. If you disconnect it and you don't have a long enough tail of yarn, that's totally fine. You can just cut yourself a length of yarn and work with that. You're also going to want a needle and a needle threader if you need one. So I'm going to show you a few different options because there can be quite a few options in this little crochet fiber artsy world and you might be wondering what is going to work the best for what you're doing. How do you pick what type of needle works best for your project? Well honestly a lot of it just comes down to personal preference. So there is going to be a little bit that depends on what type of yarn you're using. If you're using a thicker yarn like a blanket yarn, for example, here is a scrap of blanket yarn, you're going to need to go towards something larger, like one of these large eye uh, plastic ones. Um, you may even be able to get it into this one or into this one, but you're definitely not going to be able to get it into just your regular needle. And the way that you'll do this is you can either just use your fingers and kind of line it up with it and pull it through. And you can do this a little bit easier for blanket yarn than other types of yarn. Or you're going to take your needle threader and you'll notice there's a little end and a big end, depending on what size of, you know, yarn or whatever that you're weaving in. Uh, and then you just hook it. You, can, you slide your, uh, your threader through there and then you just hook your yarn around the threader, just like that. And then you just pull up on your uh, needle and then it'll thread it right on for you. Uh, obviously, I'm just threading on this little scrap to show you. So you'll see when you're using a really big piece or a really big needle like that, that works best for large yarns. I wouldn't recommend using a, a needle this large for just a regular worsted weight yarn, which is what this is. Um, this is really for blanket yarns and maybe even chenille yarns or just bulky yarns in general. Um, now you basically are left with your regular needles, regular sized yarn needles. Say you're using a DK weight or a worsted weight yarn. These are going to be more the sizes that you're looking at. So this is a regular bent tip needle. This is a uh, yarn needle or a wool needle. And this is just a plastic darning needle. This is a regular sewing needle, but it is one of the larger ones when you're buying like a pack of needles. You know how they come in different sizes. This is just one of the bigger ones. Um, I really love this bent tip type of needle when I'm doing things like sewing parts onto amigurumi, connecting limbs to amigurumi, things like that, where I want my needle to come back out. Um, and it also works great for if you're closing up a hole. Um, these ones, honestly, this is just where it comes down to preference. You may prefer the feel of these needles. The bent tip can be really helpful in my opinion because it makes it easier to pop your needle back out. But if you don't mind, you may actually prefer the feel of these. Um, this one is going to be really easy to thread because it has this little plastic loop and this plastic loop is flexible. So you've got a lot of, you know, flexibility here um, and you might actually prefer that. And then this one is really great for weaving in tails. If you're sewing in your tails on say a granny square or some kind of a project, you might want to use a regular needle because you're gonna be able to really sew those tails in nicer and get them uh, so they won't come out. But for amigurumi, this is really unnecessary and you know gonna be more finicky. So these would be the three for regular like worsted weight amigurumi that I would recommend you try and see which one you like the best. But my personal preference for this particular usage is going to be the bent tip needle. 
Now, all of these needles and threaders can be gotten online or at your local craft stores. You're just going to be looking for needle threaders um, and you're going to be looking for, these are called darning needles. Um, and then this is just a regular needle. These are plastic darning needles. This is a darning needle that is also called a wool needle. And then this one is a bent tip darning needle. I wanted to show you guys a few different options of what you might see if you're looking for a threader, because depending on where you look, if you're you know looking online or if you're at your local craft store, they can vary in the way that they look. So you might find some that are kind of you know pretty looking, uh, a little more ornate. This one happens to have a magnet so that it can hold your needle for you. And this one is gonna be like a more simple cheap one. It's just got like a little, a uh, very flexible thin wire here and you'll just thread it just the same way I was showing you guys. You'll, these all work the same where you'll thread it up through here and then you'll just slide your yarn into there and pull it through your needle. Uh, and then this is just a simplified version of this fancier looking one that I was showing you. These are really common. This one and this one are really common. Ornate ones, they can vary in how they look, but these are gonna be the ones that you're kind of the options of what you're gonna see. Okay, so now that I have shown you what kind of needles you can uh, choose from and what a threader kind of looks like, you can take your needle, whatever needle you've just decided to use, and your threader. You can use the small end or you can use the big end. I kind of just use the big end for all yarns, I'm not going to lie, um, but you can use the small end for smaller yarns. You're just going to pull that through and that's going to thread your needle for you. Now this is actually a pretty fun little process here. So I happen to have nine stitches. Uh, when you finish your project, that last row where you're doing those decreases or the last round where you're doing those decreases, in parentheses at the end of the round, it'll usually say how many stitches you have left. So you might have six, that's a pretty common number to end with. Nine is also a pretty uh, common number to end with. You may have three. Who knows? But the way that you close this is these are the tops of your stitches. So you know how you have those two loops that you normally work under for the top of your stitch? You know, you'd normally put your single crochet or whatever through here and work it through here. Well, nicely, they're kind of already sideways for us when we're closing up, but you're actually only gonna work with the front loop. So you're working with half of the stitch and you see that back loop there is unworked, you're gonna leave it. You're not gonna put your needle through it at all. So you're gonna only go through your front loop you're gonna pull your yarn through, but don't pull it taunt. Don't pull it tightly yet, just you know, so that you've got your yarn tail woven in. Then you're gonna go to the next one and you're gonna do the same thing. Front loop only, pull that yarn through, but don't pull tight. And you're gonna do this all the way around, just picking up those front loops. The front loop is this loop that's closest to you that's on top. And you can kind of keep track as you go around so I'm on my fifth one, I believe, and I have a total of nine. So I just wanna make sure that I pick up all nine of those stitches, the front loops only, because we are about to close this hole up. All right, so just grabbing those front loops only in every stitch. There we go. Okay, so now that you've done that, you haven't pulled it tightly yet, but you've pulled it so that your yarn is coming along with you. This is a pretty fun step. Are you ready? All you're gonna do is grab onto your yarn and you're gonna hold onto your project and you're gonna pull on this yarn. And it cinches that hole closed for you. Is that not a little magic trick? I find that to be such a satisfying part of the process. So now you've basically closed this hole completely. And I just like to weave my tail here back and forth a little bit, just to give myself a little extra um, security here, give it a nice little tug, you know, make sure that this hole is nice and closed. And like I said, I just weave it back and forth a few times. Uh, you can go as far down as you'd like to, or you can just do it up here. You know, if you have any spots that you see like little holes, maybe in your amigurumi or your, your project, whatever it is that you're making, then if you wanted to, you could make sure you do a pass through in that area, you know, just a little little extra to make sure that you've got this nice and secured. And then once you've done a couple pass throughs back and forth, you feel like you've got that tail nice and secured, you're just going to kind of pop through, come out at some point, literally anywhere you want to. <clears throat> you're going to pull through and you don't need your needle on there anymore. 
pull through so you don't have any yarn poking out. And then you're just going to give this a little extra tight tug and snip it right up to the project. Now the reason I said give it a little extra tight tug is so that you could pull it and then it sort of sinks right back into the project. But you can also give it a few squeezes, push on it a little bit, and that will sink that little tail piece that you just cut right back into your project. So make sure that you don't pull too tightly as you're weaving your tail back and forth. You don't want to create any dip downs in your project. You know, you don't want to have like this happening or something. Uh, but, you know, just kind of weave it around a little bit and that will sew that so that you don't have to worry about that hole opening back up. I hope that this has been a helpful video for you and that you have learned how to close a hole in amigurumi or in crochet in general. If you found this to be helpful, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and check out my other videos. I will put a link to all of my tutorials in case you're looking for more help in the description box below. I also make a lot of vloggy content, uh, you know, crochet vlog and just good, good vibes. So make sure you check it out if you're interested. I will see you around and I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day.